Well, good morning and welcome to online worship at Alamance Lutheran Church in Alamance, North Carolina. I'm Pastor Ron. Although this year's Thanksgiving was very different, a different one from what we've experienced in years past, I hope that you have been able to reflect on what God has first given to us, ourselves, our families, and our resources. We gather today to return to God our praise and our gifts and gratitude. And for all that God has, has made possible in our lives and for God's return soon. So come and join us as we are challenged to be good shepherds ministering to the poor, the hungry, the sick, and the forgotten. Our musicians have prepared music to help us prepare ourselves for worship. So let's listen in now. Blessed be God the Father, Son, 
and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God, and wake us up and turn us from sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's grace, his endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love and comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes to us today from the 64th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as the fire kindles brushwood and fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, and we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we all your people. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Together we read Psalm 80 responsively by whole verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned up on the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you anger, fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. 
You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Our second reading comes to us from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter beginning with the third verse. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our Holy Gospel comes to us this morning from the 13th chapter of Mark. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heavens, and powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather its elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven from the fig tree learn its lesson as soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves you know that summer is near so also when you see these things taking place you know that he is near at the very gates Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. And when he leaves, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Please bow your heads with me in prayer. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. Well, I hope that you all enjoyed Thanksgiving celebrations. Historically, we gather with friends and family, but this year was different. These are odd times, and they're becoming much too common. The uh, 
we anticipate all the fixings of a family meal, favorites, and the anticipation is not lost on the children who cannot wait for the meal to be over so that they can feast upon the deliciously decadent pies, cake, and cookies, right? Well, patience is not a virtue that we come by easily. Anticipation for Christmas cookies and dinners and parties and presents are but just a few weeks away, too. We can all imagine what it is like to tear open those packages at Christmas, can't we? Well, there's a, a clever car commercial where the spokesperson tears off the wrapping paper of a, of a new car. I can just imagine how much fun they had in making that commercial. As we begin our Advent season eager for Christ's coming, we can easily relate to Isaiah, Isaiah's plea to God to tear open the heavens and come down. Just think for a moment, what would you do if God came back right now or next week in the middle of shopping at the grocery or at work? Would you say, uh, hey, uh, not now, God, I'm busy. Or, God, could you have given me better notice than that you were coming? <laughs> yes, I know, that seems silly, doesn't it? But what would you do? Or, are you living in anticipation of God's coming. I'm amazed just how busy we all are going about our work and shopping that I wonder how many are stopping to remember the eighth verse of Isaiah. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. So do we recognize daily that God is the potter and we are to follow God's will? We are the work of God's hand, not ours. And in our busy lives, we can get easily confused whose will comes first. Yeah, last week we, we discussed how we get our W's confused when it comes to our commitments, right? Like, I will, I want, I wish, but in our heart of hearts, we know the other W, don't we? We won't. God's will, well, it is something that we all wrestle with. We come by it naturally. Just think of all the people in the Bible, like you and me, who have wrestled with God's will. You know, there's Moses, Samuel, and, of course, Jacob, who quite literally wrestled with God. It is something that is uncomfortable. We know God's will, and yet we want something else. This is why we come together as a community of faith and corporately confess, as we did this morning, wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. The question that we must wrestle with is, do I really want to be woken up and turned away from sin. You know, so often we just want to pull those covers of life back up over our head and get comfortable with the way sin is. Yet, we know there is something better, a renewal through Christ, to live and think and speak and serve in a more 
life-affirming way. We know that in principle, we know that in principle, but how do you do that with a blitzkrieg of information coming at you? In warfare, the term blitzkrieg is used to describe a method using an overwhelming show of force, of concentration that destabilizes defenses. As we try to sift through the bombardment of information these days, it is difficult to get a solid footing to discover the truth. Philosopher Michael Lynch describes this bombardment as information pollution, where it is easy to get lost in the internet's hall of mirrors. How are we to know our will from God's will? Am I on the right side of heaven? Who's got a ticket to the streets of gold and who has a ticket to hell? Can I get unsaved? We just want to be right with God. So which way is the right way? So many questions and so many people who say they have all the answers based on the translation of the Bible they read from or the denomination or lack of a denomination that they represent. Sometimes we just give up or do our own thing or try something new, maybe a new church, a new religion, or just our religion on TV. As we enter Advent, you can find renewed hope and promise that we have a lot more to look forward to than presents and food. Although the scenes of judgment that we read about in our first week of Advent, Advent can, can seem dreary, we also can tear back the dread and see more. Advent is calling you to live into the hope that Jesus is coming because we belong to Christ and live in communion with Christ and with one another in our community of faith. That is life affirming. It is something to rejoice in, about and, and share with others. Oh, I get it. The conversations with, with friends may be about the presence to tear open under the tree. But what if your conversation went like this? You know, I think that's, that's great what you're looking forward to, but frankly, I'm looking forward to tearing the, the tearing open of the heavens when the Son of Man will come again, and from that time on, there will be no more sorrow, no more COVID, and no more death. In a simple sentence, you deliver a present that tears open a heart and pours in Jesus. And yes, I believe that you can say that because I believe in you. In our gospel text today, Jesus goes beyond a simple encouragement, but rather an imperative to keep awake. In Mark 13, 35 through 37, because the distractions are many and we must seek the truth. We gather strength in doing so through our daily Bible readings and prayer that we can find in our weekly Taking Faith Home insert and keeping close to our community of faith here at Alamance Lutheran Church. In a world where commitments come and go, there is one promise that is a constant, that God is always at work in the world, which fosters new things in people and the world. That is a promise that author Holly Whitcomb shares in her book, Seven Spiritual Gifts of Waiting, where she tells a story about an advertising executive, Bill Backer, who experienced frustration because the flight he was on to London was redirected to Ireland due to bad weather. 
Initially, all the passengers were really angry. But by the following morning, they discovered new things about each other while they waited for more favorable weather and to board the next flight to London. It inspired the famous Hilltop commercial for Coca-Cola, where young people from many different countries gathered on a hill in Italy to sing, I'd like to buy the world a Coke and keep it company. That's the real thing. A frustrating and angry interruption in Bill's plans led to an iconic ad that aired in 1971. You might remember it. And it probably encouraged people to think more about our humanity as one with us. And I'm sure it sold a lot of Coca-Cola too. Hmm. That's the real thing huh. that the world wants to know. Is it, I, I, I hope that it's not just a fizzy, sweet beverage, but rather God to tear open the sky and come so that the mountains would quake at his presence. As we proceed through Advent, I'd like you to take time to be reminded each day to to watch, watch for God's coming and to pray. Maybe over a cup of coffee or tea in the morning as you watch the morning mist lift off the lawn or the birds singing in the trees. Listen to the Holy Spirit deep within you, nudging you to call a friend that you have overlooked for a long time or maybe send a card just to say, hey, I was praying this morning and you crossed my mind. Before the day gets busy, before the blitzkrieg of information floods your consciousness, make some room to wait upon the Lord, for it is so important for your spiritual journey. For in doing so, you will find a positive hope that lives with you and gives you a deep, abiding peace as you live with exuberant expectation for the coming of Jesus Christ. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We are going to see the King. Oh, I hope that you have been inspired this morning by the Holy Spirit to take God's word with you and to shape your conversations. And may the light of Jesus Christ shining through you show your readiness to do God's work. And as you go out into the world this week, may the peace of God dwell within your hearts and in your minds this day and all of your tomorrows. Amen.
Together with the whole church, we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and might, Tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Here are prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us. O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed. With welcome for those who are excluded. And with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity, especially Elements County Women's Shelter, Meals on Wheels, and Allied Churches Ministries. Relieve their burdens and sustain their bodies and ease their minds. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression and anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses, especially Sally, and Carolyn, Ella Ray, Josie May, Bucky, Ruth, Melba, G.H., Cindy, Mary Beth, Stan, Alan, Rose, Graham, Nancy, Mari, Ruth, Sue, Harold and Phyllis, Sandy, George, Lorene, Chastity, Cheryl, Bill, Roger, Billy, Annie, James, Nathaniel, Steve, Libby, Bob, Lynn, Emma, Scott, Aaron, and Joan. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who, are, who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw us near, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Generous God, you have created all that is and you provide for us in every season. We return to you today what you have first given to us. Bless all that we have to offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, our Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever, Lord. And in your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs for the sake of Jesus Christ. Friends of Jesus, come to the table and receive nourishment for your journey. Amen. Gathered together, even across this great distance, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, as you venture out into the world this week, may the light of Christ shining through you show your readiness to do God's work. The creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long-awaited Savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. So go in peace and remember how you might be the hands of God to the underserved and overlooked and forgotten. And I encourage you as a congregation to respond. We will and we ask God to help and guide us. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I trust that the Holy Spirit has stirred your heart into action for serving the mission of Christ to the world. Please share this link so that your friends can be moved also. It is a really cool thing to think how, well, how others can come together through hearing God's word and being moved into action for the sake of the gospel. We would like to include your prayer concerns with ours, so please share them in the comment section below and let us know if they are to be prayed for corporately in the prayers of the church or to be kept private. If you are in the area and would like to attend our popular drive-in worship, a parking lot attendant will be present to write down your prayer concerns also. 
Our drive-in worship can be heard conveniently from your cars on 103.5 FM. And then following worship, we will have communion as people exit the parking lot. When you come, we want you to know that your children are welcome here, and we do not expect them to act like adults, so please bring the whole family. In fact, we, we want to help your family by providing a weekly resource called Taking Faith Home. Studies have shown that the best way to equip families is to have devotions together. So just drop us a note, and we will send it to you so that you can get started this week. And finally, we want to thank you for your prayers and generosity in support of this ministry. You can click the link to our automated giving on our website or by mail at Alamance Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 250, Alamance, North Carolina, 27201. Your gift allows us to continue to plant seeds of hope where it is really needed right here in this community and across the world through the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America's many Christian outreach efforts. And now may the light of Christ shining through you show your readiness to do God's work. Amen. <laughs>